All right. Well, I guess it's six o'clock. So, you know, we'll go with the people that show up and get started. Um, this is our last um, AZ4H Ag at Home webinar. And not to say there might not be some down the road, but this series is um, the last one. I've got a mask here. Notice I got a 4-H shirt on for you, but I'm up in Peach Springs. I know. What are you going to do with yourself, Josephine? <laughs> hey, you've been a you've been a warrior on these webinar warrior. So tonight we're going to do some uh, our last one on working dogs. And so Ashley Jeff for sample or Af Ashley Men Mengus, you know, is she still AJ? JS to me <laughs> is going to be our that, presenter. It's always me. <laughs> so she's going to actually, if you didn't hear her say, she's going to mute her video because she's up at the Mingus 4 H camp or James 4 H camp. And so she, her internet is kind of spotty like mine at Wallapai. But I'm going to go ahead, go ahead, flip to the next one. We can do this real quick, Ashley Wright. You guys know the story? behave, we'll behave, and we'll finish, and everything will be wonderful. And then the last last one there. So thank you very much. I want to let you know that we were very happy to do this for you. And again, if you have not already received a shirt, but this one makes your fifth webinar, you'll get an email from Debbie Reed sometime next week that you can fill out a a little survey that will get the information for sizes. Um, the sizes that we have, we ordered for those youth, for those that had already made the cut when we ordered, but we will have, we have small, medium, large, extra large, 2X, I think. And so you can fill that out. So we certainly, after this is over, we want you to have a very productive 4-H and school year. So thanks so much for being a part of this. So Ashley, I am going to turn it over to you and I'm going to mute and disappear. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, like Betsy said, my name is Ashley Jeffers Sample Mingus and um, I am the 4-H agent in Greenlee County. And today I'm really excited to be talking to you about livestock working dogs. Um, my internet is a little lagged, so I'm going to have my video off, but I still hope you can hear the excitement in my voice. So since there's only a few of us, I'm really going to rely on a lot of feedback from participants. So the first question I want to know is if you have a dog, so if you own a dog and what breed your dog is. So if the three of you could throw in the chat, yes or no, if you own a dog and what breed of dog you have. So I'll even throw mine in there. See. Oh, Ashley Ray has three dogs. So I have one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Perfect. We see, like, okay, that's awesome. So I have an Australian Shepherd Border Collie mix as well. Okay. We have a Red Healer. Okay. Let's see. What else do we have? Awesome. So it looks like we all are dog lovers and that's really exciting. Ooh, a jo oh yeah. <laughs> Jack Russell Terrace. That's funny. A little puppy in the terrible threes, a yellow lab and a great Dane, a border collie. Yeah. Awesome. So it's great that we're all dog lovers. I'm really excited about that. Today, we're going to be talking about some of the breeds of livestock working dogs. Um, so there's a lot of breeds, but we're only going to be talking about a few specific ones today. And here's kind of an overview of what we'll be discussing. So we're going to talk about a few things that you should think about before you purchase um, a working dog. Then we're going to talk about uh, four breeds specifically of working dogs. We're going to talk a little bit about what the training looks like for that some resources that you can use. And then we're gonna talk about the opportunities in 4-H for the dog project. Are any of you, just by yes or no, are any of you um, in the dog project in your county? So you can just throw that in there. Yes, if you're in the dog project, no, if you're not. So let's see, got three of you. I'll wait for that. Okay, next year you're going to be, that's really exciting. 
Let's see who else. I'll switch the slide while we wait for our other two to respond. Border Collie specifically for, for 4-H. Good, we're gonna talk about Border Collies today. So um, it'll be fun. We'll have to see if I go over anything um, that you didn't already know about your Border Collie. So we have at least one that's gonna be in the dog project. And maybe we'll have a few more of you after we're done with our presentation today. So for some of you, and this is applying to before you pick your working dog. And as you see here to the right, Here's some pictures of a few of the breeds that are classified under the working dog breed. But when you're picking your dog, you're picking an employee for you, especially when we're talking about working and herding animals. My husband always says that his dog is the best employee that he has on the ranch. And that can be really true if you pick the dog that fits you right. And so that leads me into my second point is every time you're going to go buy your next working dog, you should think about a dog that best suits your personality traits, as well as the purpose and the task that you are going to complete. So a few things to ask yourself is, you know, what is my temper like? Um, what is my patience like? How would people describe me? All of these things are going to be important when you are interacting with your dog and when you're training, because your patience and your temperament is really going to affect how that goes. You also want to ask yourself what the task is that you're wanting your dog to complete. Are they going to be, what type of animals are you going to be hurting? What type of acreage do you have? Um, you know, what the environment is going to be for your dog and which breed fits best into that. Some other things to look at when you are shopping for a working dog is you want to look at their parents. We want to make sure that their parents are good working dogs, you know, because a lot of these genes are hereditary. And so we want parents that are not too shy or flighty when working animals. So it's really great if you get to see either live or a video of those parents working as well as something to keep in mind before you buy one of these breeds are there. Most of these breeds are very intelligent. They're active and athletic and they're very loyal and bonded. So these dogs make great lifelong partners and they are very, very active. And we'll talk about that and some pros and cons later. Okay. So the first common breed that we're going to talk about is a border collie, which some of you had put in the chat that you have. So maybe we'll get to learn a little bit about border collies that you didn't already know. So border collies originated near the border of Scotland and England, hence the name border collie. So really easy way to remember that. Some of the, pro the primary color is black and white, but we see them in a lot of different colors. Um, they also have a very, very smooth coat. When we're talking about size an average, this is average for both male and females is 18 to 21 inches and they're 30 to 55 pounds in weight. Their life expectancy is 12 to 15 years. So that's, I think a really, really good life expectancy when we're talking about dogs. Now, the type of animals that Border Collies are known for working really well with, that doesn't mean these are the only type of animals that they can work with, but the ones that they're known um, really well for working with are those that already have a herding instinct. So an example of that would be sheep or even like a flock of ducks or birds, but Animals that have a herding mentality tend to do really well with border collies. And border collies also do well on large livestock farms. They're quick to learn and they're very easy to train. I thought it was really fun to know that they can understand up to 60 commands of both whistle and voice. But something to keep in mind is that a border collie can be extremely overwhelming if not given enough work or exercise. So if your border collie is not getting the physical exercise and requirements that it needs, it can kind of go stir crazy for lack of better words. So they're one of those dogs that really need a lot of activity. They're also known for their intelligence, which I put an asterisk there because they're credited as being one of the smartest breed of dogs. So they're up there with the poodle. And I can say, I find that very true for any of you that have border collies, are your border collies pretty smart? If you want to throw your answer there in the chat, even border collie crosses, because I have a border collie Australian shepherd and she is, we call her an escape artist. 
Oh yeah. Look, someone's, Oh, Ashley speaks English. Yes. Yeah. She's a, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly mine. We call her an escape artist because she can get out of almost anything. Um, they also have a very good instinct and they have a, um, really memorable working style. So one thing that I did not know about border collies, and I hope that this is one of the big takeaways is that border collies have what they call the eye. And I wish you could see my fingers because I'm literally doing air quotes over the eye. And what that means is that border collies have the power to control livestock with this watchful eye. It pretty much means, and summing it all up, they get this stare down with the animals that they're hurting. So they give them these this eye. And that really plays into their type of hurting and the skills that they use. So you'll see a lot of them will crouch down when they're around the animals that they're hurting. They're on the ground with their legs underneath them and they're ready for immediate action. Um, and they use this eye to establish authority and control without overrunning the livestock. So the first thing I thought of is like, you know, when your parents kind of give you that like stink eye and it kind of makes you, you know, maybe you're fighting with your sibling or you are, you know, doing something that you shouldn't and they give you that look and you automatically like, no, that's something that I thought of is really similar to what these border collies do with the animals that they're working with. Yeah. See? Yeah, I think that that's something, as Josephine said in here, um, that her dog is already like hurting and she's already showing that eye and those crouches. So these are hurting mechanisms that are bred into this breed from generation to generation. And the eye is unique to border collies. And so one of the things is as you begin to cross breed, it sort of starts to fade, but it is unique and specific to border collies. And that takes us to our not another point when we're talking about border collies hurting is usually they don't use the biting motion to get um, the animals to move. It's really with direction and authority of that eye without overrunning the livestock. So it's really appreciative that they get to use those traits without overrunning anything. Okay, so the next breed we're going to talk about is the Australian Shepherd, also with the nickname of the Aussie. It originated, I thought this was interesting because obviously, you know, you're going to say, oh, it originated in Australia, but actually it originated in the Basque region. So for those of you that don't know um, where that is, it's between Spain and France. So it originated there and then it was imported to Australia, hence the name. Um, for their color and coat, we know them for many multiple colors, long and straight coats. Um, their size is about 18 to 23 inches, similar in size of the border collie, 40 to 65 pounds, and then a life expectancy of 12 to 15 years. So works well. This is a very versatile dog that can work with a lot of different animals. So they what we are what we call kind of a general use farm dog. And it, they can do well on small farms with limited work. So they're they they too are athletic, but they don't need as much exercise as your border collie does. So some fun facts about what they're known for. They're usually known for their docked or, or bob tail. A distinct color pattern that they're known for is the merle. So as you see right here on the right is an example of a merle colored um, coat and it's with the flex of color in it. And they have almond shaped eyes um, that can be a lot of different colors, but it is common for, for one to be blue and one to be brown. So if you um, go ahead and look at this photo and examine it, you'll even see that one of this Aussie's eyes is split down the middle and it's half blue and half brown. Yeah, wow. Wow, that's, it, that's crazy. Five months and weighs 52 pounds. So if we go back in there and look and see where that puppy is in terms of average like that puppy at five months is already you know in that middle range so it'll be exciting to see um what he ends he or she ends up at they're very attentive and animated so they're really fun loving they're known for their strength and their stamina and agility a fun fact about them which next time you see an australian shepherd you should examine this 
is that their bodies are usually longer than they are tall. So something really fun to look at at a full grown Australian Shepherd is their bodies are usually usually longer than they are tall. They're very intelligent. They're really they're a great companion. They're versatile and they're easy to train. Is there a question in here? No. Okay. Jocelyn, do you have a question? If you do, just go ahead and put it in that um, Q&A and I'll make sure to hit it. All right. Where am I? Okay, easy to train. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Betsy. Sorry, my fault. I was, I realized like as soon as I said that. Okay. Next, we're going to talk about our Australian cattle dog, which we also know as the blue healer. So this one is completely obvious, originated Australia. We don't have to think, oh, land sharks. I've never heard about Ashley Wright. Don't you have, do you have a healer? I think that Ashley might, I'm not positive, but I thought I remembered seeing a healer. Yeah, she's a red healer. So blue healer. So Australian cattle dog originated from Australia. And the purpose that they were created for was for working cattle in heavy brush areas or confinement. Um, their coat is very um, short haired in comparison to some of the dogs that we've previously been looking at. They're a little bit more moderate in size. Um, oh, wow. Two Aussies. They're very, yeah. So we have, um, there's two Aussies that they never walk. They always trot everywhere. Yeah. They're very active and they are, they're super fun loving and they work well with a lot of different animals. So the life expectancy for Australian cattle dogs is 12 to 16 years. We've seen a lot of that kind of as the norm for the breeds that we've been talking about. A little bit more moderate in size. They're not going to get as big as our Border Collies and Australian Shepherds. They work very well with um, cattle, with hogs, with horses, and especially do well in rough country or even stockyards. Um, and something to keep in mind is that, that herding is a behavior that's kind of been modified and bred and trained that, that came from kind of that predatory behavior. So we've taken that predatory behavior and we've trained and we've bred to now create this herding um, instinct. And there's two differences, um, two main differences when we talk about herding. You have healers versus headers. And so just like the name says, this blue healer is going to be what we classify as a healer. And that means they're going to drive the animals from behind, from the hills by biting them low on the hills. So that's kind of what we classify as the healer. A border collie could be classified as a header because they're going to do a lot of their driving from getting in front of those animals, giving them an eye. Um, they're not going to be found in the back biting heels. So that's something to keep in mind. And all of these breeds are bred, you know, to herd and to gather and to protect the animals. Something that's a little bit different from the breeds that we've previously talked about are healers take a little bit more patience to train. So like I said, they're known for driving animals by biting low on the heels. They're also known for being a little bit more aggressive and very strong-minded. So they may not be as easy um, to train and not as quickly because they kind of have a mind of their own. Um, they're bred to withstand a kick from cattle without backing off. So they're very resilient. You know, they're out there working animals in rough country. You know, they're behind them on the heels. They might get kicked, but they're bred to just get kicked and get up and keep going. So they're very resilient. They're loyal and protective. So they have that loyal and protective instinct, which usually makes them the self-appointed guardian, guardian of the flock, guardian of the herd, even guardian of their human companion. So they're very territorial when it comes to different things like that. All right, the next breed that we're going to talk about is the bearded collie. So the bearded collie originated in Scotland. Its color and coat is very long coated and it's known for that distinctive gray and white. 
Yeah, I know. Isn't it adorable? It's life or its size is about 20, 23 inches, 35 to 50 pounds. Life expectancy is 12 to 16 years and they work very well with sheep. One of the things that they're known for doing is um, finding hunt that it's called huntaways. So maybe they're searching for lost or hiding sheep. That's what they were bred for. So when um, a sheep herder was moving its flock along and, you know, sheep were either laying down in the brush or wandering off, that's where the bearded collie would come in. And that was their job to just come on in and um, get those sheep that were falling behind or hiding. Let's see. Yeah, so like something saying in here about um, healers that are like a, a one person dog, which is very um, typical. They kind of have that one person um, and they are very protective. So like strangers can't come around. They're very aware of that. Yeah, works with the sheep and the goats and the cows and chickens. Yeah, exactly. Know what you want and get that breed because it's very, very important. Okay. What the bearded collie is known for is being intelligent, very affectionate, stable, pretty calm natured. Um, yes. So the old, the old English sheepdog and the bearded collie have similar, they came from similar bloodlines. They're good with children. Um, they're good with working in cold temperatures, which you could probably guess from their coats. And they're very um, enthusiastic. And some of the other breeds, I'm going to go back a few slides so that you can see. So here's that old English sheepdog that Betsy was talking about. So you do see, you know, a lot of similarities between the old English sheepdog and this bearded collie. You're also going to see a lot of collies. We talked about the border collie, the bearded collie. You'll see on here, you know, another collie. There's a lot of different breeds and maybe I'll pull up um, a slide with just all of that towards the end if anyone is interested in seeing that. Yeah, so we have a number, another example of how a healer was very protective. You know, he's a one person dog. He would, yeah, grumble at pretty much anyone else. Oh, that's really interesting. So we see that there's maybe a difference in, with her red. Yeah. That's really fun. That's the thing about a lot of these things is these are just what they're known for. So that doesn't mean that every dog is going to be like that. But as someone said in the chat, it's important that you know what you want and you shop around. So here is kind of an interactive piece. So the situation is Ben is looking to buy a dog to help him herd his cattle. His ranch is on very rough and brushy country. He has a lot a lot of heads who has a lot of cattle that he needs to move and some are wild. Sorry for that typo. Some are wild. So what breed should he purchase? So he's going to be a moving cattle on rough and brushy country and he has a lot of cattle, some that are wild. So if you could put in there what you think it's going to be or what you think maybe the best thing for him to look into would be, would it be a border collie, an Australian shepherd, a blue healer? or a bearded collie. So if everyone could put in what their suggestions for Ben would be in terms of where he should shop. So I'll wait for some of those to come in and then we'll talk about that. We'll see what my suggestion is. Oh yeah, oh yeah, a Kelpie, that's another big um, breeding or another big herding dog that has a lot of different vari variations. So very good point, yep. But what out of those four, so Border Collie, Australian Shepherd, Blue Healer, or Bearded Collie, what would you suggest? Okay, a healer more aggressive and don't get the goat. To I didn't even think about that. You're right. That's also something to really think about is um, coat. And so maybe I'll hit on that when we talk about this. Okay, a Border Collie or a healer. Maybe we'll wait for like two more and then we'll see what the consensus are. So we have like healer, Border Collie. What are some of our other suggestions? Okay, border collie, healer. Okay, so what I would suggest maybe to start out with, and again, just based of, off what we know, is the Australian cattle dog, the blue healer. And some of the reasons why is we're talking about 
first things first is cattle. Okay. We know he, there's a lot of different variations. You know, we could have done a healer, border collie, Australian shepherd, even the bearded collie, those all fit. So the next thing is his ranch is on very rough and brushy country. So we know that healers were bred to be in very brushy, rough areas. And the other point that Leslie brought up in the chat also, hi, Leslie, is um, is that you've got to think about their coat. So my husband and I, we ranch um, down in, by Safford and part of the ranch is in a creek. And so every time we ride the creek, my dog, who is a Border Collie Australian Shepherd mix with a very long hair, ends up with a bunch of stickers where I pretty much have to pull everything out of her. I have to shave her. So it's such a pain. So that's a really good point that I didn't think of when discussing this, but this is the only short haired dog that we've talked about. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Also, when we're talking about them being a little wild, we're thinking, you know, they're probably maybe going to be kickers you know that might be something that we need to keep in mind and that blue healer is going to be a little bit more aggressive getting them moving and would be able to withstand a little bit more in terms of his resilience okay so amy is looking to buy a dog to help her with her small hog farm she however does not have any patience for training so what are some suggestions of what she um should get should she get a healer an australian shepherd a border collie or a um also another thing about her is um she's a little warmer temperature so keep that in mind that's not gonna throw out everybody but or should she get a bearded collie a little bit warmer temperature an aussie aussie Let's see we'll wait for two more a border collie or an aussie one more and then we'll share. Okay, Aussies don't like being yelled at. Yeah. So I said a border collie and Australian Shepherd due to the fact that um, they're both going to work well with the small hog farm and they both are really quick learners. I threw out the bearded collie because it is pretty hot there. Um, and that, and that breed specifically has a little bit more hair to it, but I do think that, um, yeah, border collies and Aussies don't appreciate being yelled at. So that's something to keep in mind, but, um, she doesn't have any patience for training that automatically to me threw out the healer because he's going to take a little bit more time and she's not going to have the patience for that. Okay. And last one. Josh has a sheep ranch outside of Prescott where there are a lot of hills. He has trouble losing his flock throughout the hill country. So what um, dog are we going to suggest that Josh purchase? Is he going to get a border collie, an Australian shepherd, or a healer, or a bearded collie? A BC or healer, border collie, think flock. Yep. Maybe I'll wait for one more and then we'll keep going. So what I suggested, even though I think that I said a bearded collie just because um, of the thought of getting those hideaways, it is a little bit cooler in Prescott. Um, and he's having trouble losing his flock throughout the hill country. And this bearded collie is going to be able to go through and kind of clean up and get the lambs that are maybe laying down, um, the sheep that have kind of wandered too far. That might be a really good job. But I think a, a border collie would also do a, a really fine job as well. Okay, now here are two breeds I just threw in there that I thought were fun to talk about because though they were originated for herding they've kind of all they've kind of shifted most of these breeds have shifted you know not everybody owns a border collie an australian shepherd and a healer for herding you know a lot of them have become pets and household you know household family members but i think these two breeds specifically really intrigue me and so the first one is the german shepherd really easy um, to remember where they originated from germany their color and coat 
um, short haired coat. They're known for their distinctive brown and black coloring. Their size is 22 to 26 inches and 75 to 95 pounds. So this is in that large sector of dogs. Um, and when we're talking about size and the biggest that we have highlighted today, their um, life expectancy is seven to 10 years. So that's a little bit lower from the previous breeds we've talked about. And though in terms of herding, they work, they're another one of those general use farm dogs. I think that it's fun to talk about how this dog was originally bred for herding and um, gathering and protecting a herder flock and is now used a lot for service. So they're seeing eye dogs. Um, they're used a lot for military. They're used a lot for the police. You know, if you are at the airport and there's a bomb squad, usually not all the time, you're going to see a German shepherd. You know, when you think about the drug dogs at the, at the police force, the can, you know, the canine force, you're going to see a lot of German shepherds. So it's just one of those neat things that breeding and instincts really play a big role but we have started to get new jobs for these animals. They're just so smart that they're able to pick things up very quickly. Okay, another um, member of the herding dog family is the Welsh Corgis. I mean, come on, how adorable. They originated from Wales. Their color and coat, they're very um, versatile in color. In size, we're talking about the smallest dog we've talked about. They're about 10 to 12 inches, 25 to 35, 38 pounds. Life expectancy, 12 to 15 years. I thought that this was um, really crazy is that they were originally bred to herd cattle. I mean, I don't know why it's so hard for me to wrap my mind around that. But yep, that's what they originated for. Now... I feel pretty confident to say they have transformed into a family dog. They're, you know, one of those great travel companion, you know, their size is ideal for different areas that you live in. And one thing though, that they're known for, and that was really helpful when it came to herding is their barking. They are big barkers, big talkers, and they can become overweight if, if they don't have enough exercise. So all of these, um, herding breeds. It's important that even if you don't live on an area with property or animals, that you're still giving them the necessary amount of exercise, whether you're taking your Australian Shepherd for a walk, whether you're throwing a ball down the hall for your Corgi, just some form of, um, some form of exercise. Corgi is lower so they didn't get kicked in the head. Oh, that's really interesting. That makes sense that the reason that they were bred for that is that um, they're lower to the ground, so they didn't get kicked in the head. Thanks for sharing that. Okay. Ashley had a friend that had a Corgi Aussie mix. It was the coolest dog ever. Super smart. Definitely a herding dog. Wow. That's kind of cool. Wow. It looked like an Australian Shepherd bag. Corgi ears and legs. I would love to see that. Okay. So the next thing I want to show you is let me see if I have enough internet to pull up this site really quick. Give me one second. So what I'm gonna pull up is the AKC site that talks about the different breeds. And one of the reasons that I think that this is a really great site, hold on one moment. One of the reasons that I think it's a great site is because it gives you a lot of information about the breeds when you're shopping for a new dog. So it talks about temperament it talks about shedding and drooling and all of these um great resources that are really important into purchasing a dog when you're not talking about hurting you know when we're talking about about buying our next family dog so i'm going to share this and then um panelists feel free to tell me if there's like any issue with my connectivity but okay so the american kennel club um is the official dog organization that um identifies pure purebreds. So they have a lot of different um, groups. And in this specific one, we're going to be looking at the herding group. So these are the dogs that are recognized by AKC for short. So for example, let's say we are, you can see, I love this one, which I think has a really fun coat. So let's check that one out. We didn't talk about it. So I'm in the market to buy a new dog. So I'm going to visit AKC. 
They have all the different groups highlighted. I want a herding dog, so I'm going to visit the herding group. And so here is a really neat site that's going to tell you a lot of different things. So it tells you what we went over in terms of like height and weight and life expect expectancy. That's really important depending on are you living in an apartment? Are you living on some property? What size can you maintain? I'm going to flip to this photo because I think it gives you a great view of this coat. But it tells you about some of the traits that they're really known for. So this sheepdog specifically is really sociable, intelligent, and independent. Like I said, most of the herding dogs can be identified as being very intelligent. The next thing is it's going to tell you how it works in terms of family life. So if you have younger siblings, is this dog good with children? If you have another dog in the home, you know, is it a good dog to bring in with other dogs? A lot of different things. Then it'll tell you about its shedding level, you know, so this dog, you don't, you don't have any issues with shedding, um, but you are going to have to get it groomed monthly. Like how much does it drool? Again, I could go through all of these things, but I won't, but it is a super great site. If you haven't visited it already, um, I would, even if you have a dog at home, you can always learn a lot about them. It just goes over what they're usually known for their personality. It gives you kind of what the breed standard is. So if your dog would be identified as a breed standard, it gives you some history, really, really great site to visit as well as go going over some suggestions for health. Um, let me see. I see there's some stuff. It also, yeah, exactly. Just being the cool and well, this dog, I think hair is so awesome, but I can't imagine it being in like Phoenix when it's 120, but that's, I bet something that it would tell you here in terms of what weather is perfect. And again, like it says here, owning a dog is not just a privilege, but it's also a responsibility. So just like all of our market animals, dogs fall under that things of animal welfare. We want to make sure that we're treating these animals and so that they're happy and they're healthy. And so this site can really help you go over with each, each breed of dogs, what kind of some of the health regimens could be, what, um, see, so usually this, they recommend that for this, this breed of sheep dog, that you get a hip evaluation and an elbow evaluation, because those are a lot of the problems that they have. And then there's, you know, suggestions for grooming and exercise. This is a really, really great resource if you haven't used it already. And then I'll go back and show you just all of the breeds that are identified by AKC as being in the herding group. All right, so now we're gonna go back to my slides. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk to you guys about is about training. So let me share this really quick. Okay, sorry, a little technical difficulties. Okay, perfect. So training a working dog is not child's play. It's serious business requiring patience, perseverance, and knowledge of what your dog, what you want your dog to learn. You must not expect the dog to learn it all in a week or a month or any set time. It is a consistent learning process. Just like me, I am a lifelong learner. So I am learning something new every day. That's the same with your dog is your dog is going to get gradually better day by day, but you need to know that it's going to take time and they too are going to be lifelong learners. So when we're training livestock dogs like from the very beginning so you just bought your puppy you want to train your livestock dog the first thing you should start with is basic obedience commands so these are the sit the stay the lay down the throwing a tennis ball and retrieving it that is fundamentally important when training a working dog because we want to start off with the basics then usually what most trainers will do is that they will go ahead and take their dogs to a long, long lead with livestock. So they keep them on the lead while working with the livestock for training purposes. And then they go ahead and take them off the lead with the livestock. Some of the common terminology that you'll hear with working dogs is away to me or away. That means go to the right of um, the herd that you're working with. Stand, which means stop. Cast means gather the stock into a group, find, so go out there and search, 
um, bark, obviously bark, look back, return for a missed animal. I love that one. I think that's so neat when they say look back and that dog turns around and sees that they left one behind and they go back and get them into the herd. And then that'll do, which means stop working and return to your handler. So these are just some of the basic commands. But like we said with the Border Collie, the Border Collie can learn 60 verbal and whistling commands. So these are the basics, but where you can do or where you can go from there is really is endless. So the next thing I'm going to share are some resources. So a book that I would suggest for 4-H members who are interested in starting to um, train their dogs to be working herding dogs is Anybody Can Do It. It's by Pope Robertson. And it's actually um, written about training working dogs from the perspective of 4-H members. So if, I mean, I can think of a better resource because it's written from people who were in your shoes as 4-H members training their dogs. So Anybody Can Do It by Pope Robertson is a really great resource. Um, this next one I thought was just fun and I already ordered it on Amazon and I'm really excited to read it. And it's called, uh, this one's specific to Border Collies. It's called A Lifetime with the Working Collie, Their Training and History. And it's written by Arthur Allen. And not only does he go over their history and training, but he also describes um, these two border collies that he trained that were able to herd a mountain lion into a truck. So can you, I mean, just picture that. That's, I think what got me is picturing these two dogs that are trained so well that they are able to herd this mountain lion into a truck. So I'm really excited to read that. And maybe some of you will be, maybe I'll start a book club with it, but anyway, so I think it'll be lots of fun. Um, then the other thing is of course the AKC website. If, if you only take one, you know, thing from this entire presentation, it's the AKC website when you're shopping for dogs. It's really helpful, gets you kind of the basic information and, and at least gets you an understanding in terms of the qualities that the breeds are known to, to possess. And then another great resource for 4 Hers is from the Oregon State University 4-H and it's called A Guide to the Livestock Working Dog. And you can just Google that one. It's an 11 page PDF, but it too goes over the basics of starting to train a herding dog. And it's a really great, easy read. And then if you go to herding on the web, they have some training resources that are online, some videos, a lot of stuff that you could do from a remote location. Because I know not all of us have the ab ability to find a trainer near us, or some of us would like to train our own dogs. So there's a lot of great online resources that you can find, but one of them would be herding on the web. So like I said, if you need any of these resources or want to know, know more, just shoot me an email and I'm going to go ahead and throw my email in here before I forget. Okay. Now for a little fun, it's going to be lagged because videos on Zoom always are. I want to show you a video of our working dog. So this is Hasty and she is a... um hanging tree catahoula cross which is a different breed of um cattle dog which is not recognized by akc there's a lot of you know breeds that have been crossed that are not a part of akc and um these are some of them but she is our number one working dog on the ranch and so here she is um working one of our yearlings so let's see how this goes <laughs> Okay, so what style was she using there? Does anybody, let's see, if you could throw in the chat, what style of herding was she using there? Oh, look, someone loves hanging trees. Yeah, this, ours is really, really pretty. I'm really biased though. We also nominated her for American Farm Dog of the Year. But um, yeah, so what style of herding is she using there? Let's see if anybody remembers. I'll give it like a minute and if not maybe i'll go over and tell you what i am thinking 
maybe I'll give it. Is she heading or is she healing? Predominantly. She does both, but predominantly in this video, is she heading or is she healing? Oh, try to play it again. Okay. I'll try it one more time. And if not, no big deal. Let's see. I don't know if that helped anymore, but if not, I'll just go ahead and so she does both. My husband wishes she was a better at heading, but yep. Yep. Yeah. So she, she's one of those that's really versatile. And, you know, one thing that she does a lot is she kind of nips at their, at their tail. Um, sometimes she'll just like grab them by the tail, which is, um, a really interesting to see, but like, like I said, if you have a very well, um, trained dog, they can be so much help. A lot of the time my husband's out there working by himself and he wouldn't be able to do the work that he does without hasty. Okay. So now the part to talk about, what can you do with this? So first of all, the 4-H opportunities that are available to you in terms of dog in general is of course the dog project, which we have um, obedience, showmanship and agility. As you can see in this uh, picture, we have some of our Pima County dog showmen at the fair a few years ago, um, pre-COVID, but for these herding dogs, you can do all of those. You can do um, showmanship, which is kind of like um, basic. I think of it a lot like showing cattle, very basic. Obedience is when they start to do commands. So if you have a, her a herding dog, they're really intelligent. That would be a really um, good event for them. As you can see, just in here, I think I see at least three, three or four herding dogs in this picture. I see this Australian Shepherd. I see this Border Collie. We have a Blue Healer, another Border Collie. And so they're really smart and pick things up. Oh, and a Corgi. Oh, wow. There's a lot of herding dogs. So they pick things up really quickly. The other thing that herding dogs are really good at is agility. So make sure maybe if you're not familiar with it after we get done, if I wish I could play videos better, but after we get done, go and Google agility. It's so fun to watch. If you have a very athletic and dog that just loves to get out and run and do all of these different things outdoors. I think agility would be fun. There's a tunnel, there's a ramp, um, there is weaving. So make sure to check that out. And then the next part is, okay, so this is a really good question before I go on. So, um, Josephine talks about how they don't have dog at the Avabuck County Fair and they don't have it in 4-H. They have it in, in the project, but no shows. Are there any shows around the state like the dog version of say that? Yes, yes, there are. So if, send me an email because I will get you a list of those resources. So AKC does youth shows. Um, a lot of them are, oh yes. And while I answer this question, if uh, Ashley Wright is going to put the evaluation link in um, in the in the chat, because please make sure you do the evaluation. It really, really helps us out. And then it, it gives us reason to do future programs like this, maybe, you know, someday in person. But going back to this, so there are youth shows that you can get involved in that are outside of 4-H. So make sure to shoot me an email and I will get you um, that list as well as if the beauty of 4-H is if you don't have this opportunity at fair, let's talk about it. I'm actually here at James 4-H camp with one of the Yavapai County staff members. So I'll put a bug in her ear, but if there's enough youth members in your county that want to do the project, we can get the ball rolling. So that's something really exciting, but yes, yeah, shoot me an email and I'll get you some youth shows. The other opportunities that we have um, in Arizona 4-H for dog is dog quad. So this is the knowledge portion of the dog project. So it's comprised of four different areas, um, quiz bowl, a breed ID, and that's going off AKC breeds. You give a presentation similar to a demonstration, and then there's a written test. And that's lots of fun getting to put your, um, your knowledge to the test. And then another fun program that's in Pima County, but again, it's one of those that if you have enough kids interested, who says you can't start one in your county? 
is there's a guide dog program in Pima County. So what they do is they send these guide dog puppies home with 4-H members who begin to train them with the basic obedience training. So like we talked about, a lot of advanced training starts with those basic sit, stay, you know, retrieve. So they train them with those basic things and then they get taken and they get trained to be a service dog. And then they get placed in a home with somebody who needs them. So it's a really neat program. But I think after this presentation, I'd be really excited to start a working dog project. And like I said, I'm in at James 4-H camp, so I might have to have the ear of Jeremy, but I think a working dog project would be lots of fun. So if you have any questions, that's um, going to wrap it up for me. Let me, I'll put my uh, face back up and um, finish up here, but I'm going to be a little lagged probably. If you have any questions about dog 4-H opportunities um, in terms of 4-H, reach out to me. If you want to know about some youth shows that aren't related to 4-H, reach out to me. And if you're interested in starting a state working dog uh, project, reach out to me because maybe we could do that. I think it'd be lots and lots of fun. But other than that, that's all I have. Thank you so much for joining and a big, big shout out because they didn't, um, you know, they didn't get it earlier is a big shout out to Ashley Wright and um, Betsy Green for thinking of this great opportunity. I'm so glad they involved me, but if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have gotten to meet and learn so much about um, so many different animals and the way that we can get involved in 4-H with those different projects. So thanks so much, Betsy and Ashley, and thanks to everyone who joined.